Notes is one of those applications that has evolved over the years. It started out as a very simple note-taking application. Um, uh, how many of you are using a third-party uh, notes app like Evernote or GoodNotes? No, so you're, you're all using notes app. Because for many years, I, you know, it, it just didn't suit my needs. Um, I didn't want to have this bucket that, that, that was uh, infinitely long and in, in unable to sort. Um, so I, I had an, an Evernote account for many years, which I was very, very happy with. Um, but slowly but surely, Notes has grown to this fantastic uh, little application uh, that is integrated so well into the operating system. Um, so. Um, those of you who are using notes on a regular basis, um, hopefully there'll be one or two things that you've not seen before that maybe makes your use of the app a little bit more refined and a little bit smoother. And um, those of you who don't use it, well, maybe there'll be a couple of things that uh, might prompt you to, to want to put your information in there as opposed to reminders or as opposed to stickies. So let me share my screen. This is our notes application. We're going to be looking at notes initially on the Mac. Then I'm going to go over to the iPad so that you can see how we use the pen tool and some extra functionality that's built into the notes app. Um, it's one of these typical three paned interfaces on the left hand side. We have um, all our sources. At the moment, you can see the only notes that I store are stored in iCloud. I store no nothing locally on my, my iPad because I want the notes that I type in to be available on all my devices. Hence, I store my notes in iCloud. But I'll show you how we can store it locally if that's not an issue for you. And I'll show you how to store it on other cloud services as well. Um, we'll look at formatting our documents. Um, we'll look at um, then um, sorting and finding information very quickly. Then we'll move over to the iPad and we'll look at handwriting recognition, the pen, scanning information into the iPad, collaboration tools, and then how to get information in and out of, of uh, uh, our notes very, very easily. Maybe using links between notes and reminders to actually trigger events for us. Um, those of you who attended our sharing session, there'll be a little bit of duplication, but it's very difficult not to do that. So on the left-hand side, I have all iCloud notes. You can see 627. There are 400 notes, and these are really just notes that haven't been put into folders. And then I've created these folders, an inbox, an archive folder, cards, Digicate notes, which has subfolders. There's two subfolders. There were at least one subfolder, the school subfolder over here. And then all other notes over here. Now, if, if you added up all numbers, you would come up to the 627 number that you get all in iCloud. Now, what if I wanted to store my, my, my information locally as well? Well, if I go to my notes preferences, this is where I set the default values for when I create a new note and where my notes are stored. And over here, I've got enable the on my iMac account. Now, watch down on, should be down at the bottom. If I click enable on my Mac, you see over here, it's just added a new destination. So any notes that I create in this notes folder will only be stored on my Mac, will never synchronize across to my iPad or my Mac, unless I airdrop it, but it will never synchronize automatically. In addition, if I've got a third party cloud service, let's say for example, I have Google or I have um, an exchange account. If I go to my internet accounts, and let me take my exchange account for, for the moment, as you can see, my exchange account, this is my internet account in exchange. I have my mail service active, my contacts, my calendars, my reminders, but I don't have my notes active. So if I wanted to store this and access it in my 365 as well as iCloud, if I click on notes over here to activate it, there you go, you'll see Alan at Digicape Notes. So these are my Excel notes. And now when I create new notes or new, or new folders, I can choose where I want to store them. My preference is to store them on um, uh, iCloud. But just to show you how this works with Exchange, for example, if I have notes selected under my Exchange account and create a new note, um, let's just type, um, this is my first note that will sync with Exchange. I hit return. Um, 
just some text there. Let's see how long it takes to sync. If I go to my Outlook, there's my Outlook calendar. If I click on Notes, it's already there. So I can now carry on editing this line three and so on. And I'm not quite sure if it's going to sync back as quickly as it synced going forward. Let's just hide this. And it's not in there yet, but when we come back to it, it seems to be a lot quicker syncing out of notes into Exchange than back. But that might be something to do with our Exchange server. So this is how we access our services and set up the defaults where we store our information. So let's go ahead and create a new note, and I'm going to make it in, in iCloud. And I want to, to talk about text entry. Because you can see this document is reasonably well formatted. It's, it's, this, this is the script that I'm working off for today. And while it's not a word processor where I can spend a lot of time adjusting my fonts, although I, want, I, I could if I wanted to, um, there's some really nice tools that help me work on my notes. So let's have a look at our interface over here. Firstly, you can see all iCloud notes. These are my notes. This is um, uh, a document that I was sharing with my colleagues for a parent portal that we're building for our, our schools. More notes, more notes, more notes. Um, photographs inside my notes. Um, theories, stuff that's come down from the internet. So let's create a new note. And I now have a blank note inside all iCloud. So if I look at my formatting, by default, there's a few formats. I've got title, heading, subheading, body, monospaced, and lists. So if I choose title, um, this, this is the title of my note. And hit return. And you can see over here that it automatically gets the name of the title from the first few words of my sentence. So if I copied and pasted stuff from the internet, whatever was in the first line of my text would be the title of my note. So now if I want a subtitle, I'm going to say, just choose a subheading. Um, here are some points. Now, I'm a keyboard guy. I don't like to have to go to the menu, back down, to the menu, back down on keyboards. So while I can, um, add bulleted lists, dash lists, and numbered lists, um, I prefer to do it automatically. And the way we can create lists automatically is if you, there's three things we can do. If we start a list with a dash, a hyphen, and a space, it automatically creates a note. So I can say point 0.1, and I hit return, point 0.2, point, point 0.3. Hit return. I've got point 0.4, if I return again, it takes me back to normal text entry. And, and now I can carry on in a regular note. So that's my first automatic bullet points. The second one is the asterisk. If I type shifted eight and hit space, I get a bullet point. So this is bullet one. Turn, bullet two, bullet three, bullet three, bullet. I am a Russian today. And the final one is a number with a full stop. So if I type one full stop, first point, and then hit return, it automatically numbers. Second point. So a lot of the stuff is taken care of us uh, for us automatically. It's um, a nice way of creating our, our, our documents. So what else can we put inside a note? Well, if I've got a web browser open, let's just go to Safari. Oh, and I see this is synced up in the background, which is fine. I can quit the Outlook. I've proved my point over there. So where are we in Safari? last page I went to is events.apple.com. So if I want to take this text and move it into my notes, I can just copy it, switch to my note, hit paste, and it takes the formatting of the, of the styles of my note. I can also drag and drop. Uh, if I click and hold, you'll see that text becomes editable text. That's just a technique. If you, you click and drag, you'll select. If you click and hold for a few seconds, you'll be able to move text around. So I can bring information in that way. 
I can bring pictures in by copying and pasting, by dragging and dropping. So if I go to, uh, let's go to Digicape. Always a good spot for images. I can take this image, drag and drop it into my, my, my document and so on. Now, I can build up my notes um, nicely using the tools at my disposal, but there are other ways of getting information into the, into the notes, and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, the monospaced one is a useful one for creating lists um, because traditionally when computers were first developed, each character on the screen took up the same amount of space. So you had what was called an 80 column character set. So the letter I took up the same amount of space as the letter M, for example. But now if you look on your computer over here, you'll see the letter I takes much less space than the letter N and it's much easier to read and it's much friendlier, but it makes it difficult to line things up. So if I use monospace text, I go back to that style of having a text that's equally spaced. So I can say, this is column one and hit a few few returns this is column two now I hit return and i can say item one hit spaces item two and everything will will line up if i put two spaces in there and i put two spaces in there it will always line up and everything will look very, very nice. Um, if I convert that to traditional text, it'll look terrible. So we, 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 monospace text is a nice way of putting columns together. But the other way of doing it, of course, is to insert a table. So if I go up to my table over here and insert a table, by default, I'm getting uh, two columns by, by two rows. So I can say head one, heading two, and I've hit return, it takes me, or tab, I can tab my way or return my way through this, and I can start building um, dogs, 25. Hit return, I get a new line, cats, 33. I can basically move things around, I can adjust things, I've got some simple tables, but I can line things up very nicely using my tables over here. Um, Going back to the way things are laid out over here, at the moment, you'll see over here, I have a number of items that are pinned. And you're probably wondering why when I created my new note, did this appear seven notes down? It's a little difficult to see. And with the next version of notes, which is coming up with Big Sur, the division between your pinned notes and notes which are not pinned um, is, is a little bit more evident. Um, you can, that line is basically a pixel wider than that line. So it's a little difficult to see. But if I right click on this and I choose to pin this note, the note goes to the top of my list. So notes that I'm working on currently uh, can be pinned to the top of a list, whether it's in all iCloud or if it's in, let's say, um, just inside a subfolder. So this is now pinned to the top of that. And you can see a double line over there, whereas you can't see a double line over there. So pinning notes is a nice way to surface things to the top. And when you've finished with them, they no longer have that priority. You can unpin them. What about security? Well, if we go to preferences, you'll see over here that we can lock our, 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 um, our documents. I actually can't remember what my password is because I use Touch ID. I've got one of those MacBooks with a, a little touch, um, touch bar. With a, and, and my Mac uses face recognition, but I can change the password or reset the password. But one of the things that I can do is if, if I am concerned about the, the security of my notes, um, if I go back to the note that I just pinned to the top, if I, um, I can lock it, you can lock the notes password and you can unlock them with the master password. And this becomes locked until you choose to unlock it. So if you've got a note, uh, a Mac that's open and you don't have a password to it, but there's confidential information, like not so confidential, but over here I've got my Clix card, my Avis card, my Discovery card, my AA card. I could lock those and I could put all my credit cards in there if I ever needed to refer back to um, side of this if i needed to refer back to what the pins were what the numbers were and so on i could put my information so i can keep private information inside here and keep it and keep it private um 
Another feature, if I double click on a note, I can float the notes. So I can actually bring the notes out so I can have more than um, one window open. I'm not just stuck with the, the monolithic interface over here. So if I've got notes where I need to compare or drag and drop information between, that's fine. I can do that. I just double click to open them. Now, what if I wanted to have a note that always stayed on top of everything else? I needed to refer to passwords. I needed to refer to instructions. And I want to be able to move windows around behind this and always have this at the top. Well, what I can do is I can go to the window, window menu and I can choose float on top. And now this window, if I click on the window at the back, the focus is now on the back window. I can see because the title bar is bold, but this still floats on the top. I click this one, I can bring it to the front. This one always stays on top. To stop it from floating, I have to select it and then just uncheck float on top. So that makes it possible. And now it just goes back into the background like a normal, like a normal note. Um, Okay, so that's where I want to leave it on the Mac version just for the moment. We will probably come back to it. Um, but I'm going to switch to my iPad. So you're both me for a second. Okay, let's hide on this. Okay, and here we've got um, my iCloud. And as you can see, the document that I pinned previously the document I was working on a couple of seconds ago is on my iPad. So this is really lovely. And if you can see on the left-hand side, as I'm tabbing between my, my, uh, my applications, if I was working on my iPad, the icon on the left tells me, let me take you straight to the iPad, the note that you're working on on your iPad on your Mac. So I was to switch to another note on the iPad and moved over to my Mac and use the command tab, or go to my dock, you could see I could switch straight to notes in the, in the note that I was in at the time. That's another useful tool. So let's have a look and see what are some of the things that I can do on the iPad that I can't necessarily do on my Mac. So the first thing is my settings. You know, the, the, you've got the pen, you've got the draw tools with most modern, modern Macs. So I'm gonna use Angelo's little trick. Um, I'm going to go to my settings by using Siri. Settings. And this takes me to my settings and takes me straight to my notes settings. And if I go down at the bottom, here's a couple of things that I can do. If I'm creating a new drawing, I can have some predefined grids or, um, or line spaces. So if I, I want to write quite tightly and I don't feel like writing on a, um, if I want to write text as opposed to draw, and I wanted to have some lines and I want to free form on a blank screen, this is what I'll get. Um, the other thing which I didn't show you on um, on the Mac is we can also create to-do items. And we'll come back to that at the moment. But you can sort your to-do items, which is a checkbox, either manually by dragging them up and down a list, or automatically, where when you check them as done, they go to the bottom of the list and all your undone items appear at the top. So these are some of the things that I can do. And the other thing that we'll come back to at the moment is access notes from your lock screen. So if you want to make a quick note on your iPad and you don't want to unlock your screen and go through the schlep of unlocking, going to notes, making a new note, you can do it directly from the lock screen just by tapping on the screen. So let's go back to notes <clears throat> and see what that looks like. So the first thing I can do is, 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 is if I want to draw, I just take my pen out. Um, I, I can um, tap on markup and I can start drawing. So here's my pen tool. I can choose the line thickness. I can choose the color that I want. And if I tap, let's just move this guy off to the side. If I tap, there we go. Uh, so if I tap and draw, I can start drawing. I can start writing. And this really just becomes part of my note. Um, I can move my drawing, I can increase or decrease the size of my drawing by, by taking that line up and down. Um, now, one thing about the text over here, the iPad under iOS 13 and on Catalina recognizes text, but only for searching. It doesn't convert it to text. It doesn't convert your handwriting text, your handwriting to text. Um, 
this will change in iOS 14, iPad OS 14, and on Big Sur. So if I was to create a new note, and I start, um, it's just writing over here. Um, you can see I now have my lines over here that I can start writing, writing with. So let's say this is a new note with my terrible scratchy handwriting. Um, and yeah, you can see down in the bottom over here, it didn't do a particularly good job because my writing was appalling. So let's just delete that and see if I can do a slightly better job with my writing. Okay. Um, um, uh, new note was made today. Yeah, it's it's not doing a great job, and that's me. It's not it's not this. Um, usually, it does a better job, but um, your mileage may vary. So, what else can I do over here? Well, if I wanted to scan information in here, um, I could tap down over here, and if I tap on the camera over here. You see, I have three options. I can either go to my photo library and then import a, a picture in from my photo library, or I could take a photo or a video and insert it in there. So let's take a quick video. Here's my, my setup, and we'll start filming. Oh, there was a photo, sorry. Let's go take photo or video. Let's move to video. And I'll scan across the screen. Let's see if we get a little infinity mirror going. Yep, there we go. Excuse the mess. It's not usually as messy as this, but to prep with all the wires, we need to do that. Use video. And now there's a photo and there's a video inside my notes. And I'll scan across the screen. Let's see if we get a little infinity mirror going. Yep, there we go. So that's two things I can do, photo or video. But I can also scan. And scanning is a useful tool because if I've got a document that I want to get inside here, I can tap plus, scan the document. I'm hoping that the lighting is good. If I hold this over my document, you can see how that document is highlighted in yellow. I can now take photos of more objects, but if I tap on that, you'll see it's turned it into a document which is really an editable PDF. And I can change it from a color document to a grayscale document to a black and white doc to a photo, which is what the original was, but let's stay with the color document. And I'm happy with that, so I tap done, and I'll save it. And now that is added to my document over there. Now, maybe I don't want my, my, my images to be full size. And let's take this one, for example, over here. Actually, I've done this on this one, so let, let's go to here. So I've got some notes that I'm taking over here, and I want people to be able to see it. But while I'm working on it, I don't necessarily want this image to be so big. So if I press and hold on it, I can say, make it a small image. And now all my images are little thumbnails. So the words are now the focus of the, the, the document. But if we want to now have a look at these images, which are marked up, I just change them into large images. So this is also a, a nice way of working through our documents on the, on the iPad. The last thing that I want to, to show you, chaps, um, is our share sheets because um i think when sharing was introduced from the mac from the ipad back to the mac a lot of it's fairly misunderstood and a lot of it is underutilized so um let's see how we can get information into our notes um i'm going to make a new note over here and i'm going to call this uh, things i want to do and this is just going to be in my, my, my regular notes. So let's say I go to Safari and I, I want to buy myself an iPad Pro. And I'm, I'm interested in this. So one of the things I could do is I could get this address, I could copy it across, but I haven't got notes open at the moment. If I click on my share sheet, one of the things I can share it to is notes. Now you can say, okay, well, that's nice. It just sends it into notes. Where do I find it? Well, one of the things that I can do when I'm in the notes share sheet over here is where do I want to store it, on my Mac or on iCloud? You, you notice over here that Exchange isn't supported, right? Because 
the exchange notes doesn't support URLs. So this is one of the things that is a bit of a gotcha sometimes when it comes to storing your notes on third parties, which is why iCloud is such a goodie. But if you go back to, to iCloud and I go to things I want to do, it'll take this link and if I click save, if I hide this, it's now created that uh, link on that note. And if I double click on that, it opens up my web browser and it takes me to that page. So if I'm on a different page over here, and once again, I double click on this, it takes me back to that page. So now I can add many, many things to here. Um, if I want to, um, let's go, I think I used this before, Peregrine Farm Store. This is a place I want to visit. Okay, let's take this and we'll put this to notes. And you notice it's remembered the last one that I was at. It's fine. So I'm just going to click save. And if you go back to notes, Peregrine is one of the things that I want to do. So let's just check my preferences over here. And I want to make sure that they automatically sort ticked items is on. Yes, it's on. So now if I want to add a checklist of items that I want to buy at Peregrine, I can just click the check, check checklist now and I can say Springbok pie, coffee, apples, wine after lockdown. Now, if I click on this, because we've chosen to automatically sort it, it goes to the bottom. And you go, well, okay, that's nice, but it's not necessarily a reminder. How do I know that? There's things that I haven't done over here yet. Now I want to go back to our share sheet. Let me just hide this guy. And I'm going to link this note to um, to my um, reminders. So if I click reminders over here, again I get the same share sheet that I had inside um, inside Safari, <clears throat> but this time it's asking me to choose the list of reminders that I, I want to do. And you can see I've got movies that I want to watch, books that I want to read, shopping lists for with, with my family, just chemist, just general stuff. But if I've got something that I don't necessarily have a topic for, I've created myself an inbox, which is just a general bucket list, which I then go back and sort. So let me click my inbox, I'll click add. Okay, so if I add remind, if I go to my reminders now, and open up reminders and go to my inbox. There you'll see things that I want to do. Okay, and now I can say, you know what? I want you to remind me. Um, I want you to remind me about this tomorrow, <clears throat> and I want you to remind me at two o'clock tomorrow. I could also say, remind me when I drive past Peregrine Store, but that's fine. I'm I'm good with that over there. So now, if I go to another um, note, or even if I quit notes completely. And I come to my inbox, well, I've got things that I want to do. They're not checked off. But do you notice over here that I get the little notes icon? If I click on that, it'll open up my notes and it takes me straight to that note. So working together with my reminders and my notes, I have uh, an application that will let me get more detail than reminders allows me to have. And I also piggyback on the facilities that reminders has in terms of giving me alarm tomorrow so that I can open this up so that I can actually action the rest of the apples and then I'll drink the wine. Um, yeah, last, last thing. Let's just go back to the iPad. Let's find others. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm, I'm going to lock my screen. Now you won't see the screen lock, the on reflector on the screen there, you'll just see my home screen, but you're just, you're gonna to have to trust me that I'm, I'm, I'm locking my, my device. So I'm gonna click lock now, and oh, it's actually done it. Now I'm gonna tap my screen with my pencil. There we go. And what it does is it opens up the notepad on my lock screen. So I can start writing or I can start typing, and I'll just, uh, so lock screen note. Now you might go, well, I haven't typed in my password. This will give everybody access to my notes. No, just like your lock screen with your camera only shows you the notes that are taken at that point in time. If I go to all notes, 
there's nothing there. I have to uh, use face recognition to open it up. But now you can see the note that I typed in my lock screen has been added to my list and I can now file that into wherever I want to file it. So if I want quick, quick access to take a note either with a pencil or start writing, um, using the, the option to write on the lock screen uh, or to, to create a note on the lock screen is a very, very powerful tool. It will save you lots and lots of time. So I've come to the end of my allotted time and I've run through almost everything that I wanted to do. I didn't get to the collaboration, uh, but we did cover that in sharing. So if you want to collaborate on notes with other people and you didn't do the sharing session, you're welcome to go to the YouTube channel and, and have a look at the sharing is caring session. And with that, I'm going to end the screen sharing session and open it up to questions. Alan, I like the idea with the debit credit card system. Is it mm -hmm. the only way to do it via an iPad slash phone, or could you use the MacBook Pro to photograph those, or what is the quickest, easiest way to do it? You could, but, I mean, you'd, you'd have to hold the um, – so if you – look, you could take photographs of things and put them into your, your uh, into iPhoto and import them. Um, you could use the camera on your phone, uh, on, on your Mac. Uh, one of the tools that you do have, um, let me just share my screen one more time. If I wanted to insert a, a photo over here, um, if you do have an iPhone and an iPad and you don't literally want to open up notes on the iPhone and iPad, if you go to your media center over here, you can open your photo library, but you can also say, well, take a photo or scan a document on your phone. So you could say, okay, scan a document. You could have your, ca your, your um, uh, now basically what it's doing, it's opening up the camera on my, my phone. So I'll just take a picture of the keyboard for the moment. It thinks it's a document and I'll say, keep the scan. And in a second or so, I'll save that. And now that document is in my uh, inside my, my my notes. So you can use your phone as a scanner, but not necessarily in notes as well. And you can see on mine, uh, both my iPhone and my iPad are available for um, uh, adding images into this. Ellen, um, can I ask? Hey, this thing that sounds very interesting is this notes thing where you can take um, scan on a note and have editable text. I'm sort of trying it while we're sitting here. And not quite seeing how that would work. Is it just automatically editable or do you have to do something? To no, man, it, it's not, as I said, in iOS 13 and on iPad OS, um, any handwriting you do, you can search for, but it doesn't turn it into editable text. On iPad OS 14 and on Big Sur, which will be coming out sometime next month, um, anything you write can be turned into editable text, but it won't take a scanned image and turn it into editable text. Editable. Okay, so we never get that option of having to scan something and then make it editable. editable An OCR? Yeah. No. If you want to do that, Mandy, uh, there are a number of third-party apps that do that, and then you could bring that bring them into notes. The one that I use is called Scan Pro, and I think we talked about this on, on one of our first sessions. You remember the first, we had um, uh, scanning um, using your, your phone and your um, or scanning without a scanner, and we covered covered that. Yeah. Let me just double check. Scanner Pro is the one that I use, but they're all advancing all the time. It's quite possible. I think the Adobe Acrobat Reader will now scan an OCR for you, but I stand corrected on that one. Thanks. Sure. May I ask a question? It's Yolanda speaking. Yes, Yolanda. I just wanted to know, is it possible to create smart folders in notes? That's a great question. I don't believe it is. Um, all the notes that you make are manually created. I've never seen an option for a smart folder. No. Thanks. Yeah, what, 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 what are you looking for? You're looking for um, matching words and so on that might... Uh, generate a folder how would how would you want to use it um I, I was just thinking maybe to create a smart folder for notes created in 2019 and put it in a folder or by year or by topic or by keyword or so i've got but you because no. i've got a lot of notes yes 
Yeah, the closest thing you can do, and again, time constraints I didn't show you, but when you've got a folder or all notes, um, if you go to the view menu, uh, one of the things you can do is sort them. The default is to sort your, your notes by the date you edit it. So all the notes you've been working at always surface to the top, but you can also sort them by title and you can also sort them by date created. So if you've got a big monolithic folder that's just one folder that's got stuff in, you could sort them by date created, then make a new folder and just drag that chunk of them into your 2018, 2019. And, and it's also, I guess, down to naming conventions. You know, you might want to give your document titles that are consistent and you could do a search for them. Uh, so it might be a client name, for example, or it might be an activity that you do. And you might say, okay, karate dash notes and then you just do a search for karate dash all of them appear in the list you make a note you drag them across so you know the organization requires you to be organized to a degree although you can sort by by dates if that if that helps lovely and a great session on notes by the way i enjoyed it thank you very much appreciate it really do appreciate it. thank you thank you guys we really do appreciate having you here it's lovely seeing you all here great Lovely, guys. Thank Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Dave. Bye. Bye.